Okay. Um, so we are almost done with Google Search Engine. Maybe this week and then uh, possibly next week. Then we'll be done and then we get into a uh, database. OGS and I think I just discovered a new one called DuckDB. Has any of you heard about it? Yeah, DuckDB. Like, it's a new one, a little bit new, but it's uh, much easier. It's uh, also very powerful, very fast. So I'm thinking about maybe we use DuckDB first. And then when we have time, we get into Q, uh, PostGIS. Kind of very similar, but it's so much easier to install and to manage. If you want to try it out, uh, you can, I think, just search DUCKDB. Open source uh, database. I'm new. I have no idea about, like, I check some tutorial. It's much easier to install and then integrate much better with Python. So I think we will um, I'll spend some time to learn this one, introduce. Trust me, it's going to be so much easier than PostgreSQL because you have to install and um, even if you have to get data out, it's very complicated. This one, it looks so much easier. I wish I knew that a lot, I mean, last year. But again, um, we cover them probably next week, next week or next next week. Um, but I, I just need to figure out what what kind of thing. But it, it, that, it cannot do all the geospatial stuff yet. But in terms of interstation and how to do the query, it's so much more efficient than uh, other databases. Anyway, don't worry. I will learn first and then I will teach you guys how to use that. <laughs> so, but uh, this is totally new. But I think it's especially you're doing vector data, you're doing a large amount of data, this one is so fast. Mm. I, I've saw some videos, it's amazing. So anyway, so let's finish this uh, Google Sensei stuff, then we get into database. So for today, we're gonna cover how to <coughs> export the data. So we have like show you how to visualize the data, how to analyze the data. And in, at some point, you need to be able to actually get the data out of Google Sensei. And you want to integrate with other um, packages or you want to create some maps. So exporting data is something that you definitely need to know. And one thing I would point out is Google Searching is a, not a data downloading platform. So if you're using Google Searching solely for the purpose of downloading data, probably you are using the wrong way. It's probably faster to go to the original data portal. So Google Searching doesn't actually provide, doesn't create the data the data from somewhere else, from USGS, from NASA, from uh, ESA. So it's from a variety of sources. If you just want to download the data, go to those original data source, sources. Usually it's much faster. Google Searching, you can think about it like a free uh, cloud computing platform. Everyone can use it, you can do computation, kind of like it's a free movie theater, okay? Everyone want to watch a movie, you need, you need, take, you need, to, you need to wait a little bit. But if you want to like, okay, I want to download this last like file, MKV, and then many, many gigabytes to your computer. Yeah, you need to wait because it's going to use a lot of bandwidth and it's not going to allow you to grab a lot of data. Out. So it's better to go to the original data um, provider. Download. But there are some ways you can get the data out. Either it's raster data, vector data, or you can get tons of data out um, pretty easily. And, but there are some certain limitations that I, um, I want you to know. So in this lecture, I'm going to go through how you download images, uh, one single image, or download a bunch of images, or download some vector data, and you can download directly to computer, or you can download to Google Drive, uh, you can download to Google Cloud Storage, so multiple ways you can uh, export the data. So let's look at some uh, simple example here. So I'm going to create this map. So it's, imagine, right, you find a power-free image for your area of inches and you want to download it like perfect uh, how big is this one like you, you will not guess so this is length set eight for this single image in here uh, what's the estimated file size for a length set eight image if you ever download the uh, length set eight image to your computer how big it is a gigabyte yeah probably one gigabyte so 30 meter resolution, um, multi-spectral band is like roughly one gigabyte. So here, 
um, I'm going to use some um, the simple demo. So I'm going to just maybe a small area. Of course, you can download it in time. It's, it's up to you. But uh, for demonstration, I'm just going to, for example, I want this area on our San Francisco. So you can either draw a rectangle right on the map or you can just specify an ROI, E dog geometry dog bounding box. And then you'll be X lower left corner, X Y, X Y upper, left, upper right corner. So you can specify a boundary. So basically, specify a point here and also another point up here. So X mean, X, uh, Y mean, X max, Y max. And with that, so now what we are trying to do here is we want to download images within this bounding box, right? And it's actually pretty simple. So all I need is just uh, use uh, gmap.e export image. Okay, call this function, and then within here you can pass in the parameter. So image is the entire lens set image, and this is the file name you want to use when you export to your computer. Uh, spatial resolution, so thirty meter. And one thing you need to specify is this one region. Okay, if you don't specify, you want to exit the memory. So the, the limitation of exporting Google Sensing Data directly to a computer is 32 megabyte. 32 is pretty small, okay? Compared to the one gigabyte. So if you're trying to, oh, I want to get one gigabyte to a computer, uh, if you're using the official API, it doesn't support it. But right now, let's try this one. So take a look at it here. Uh, E-export image, and then it's going to uh, grab the entire image, but you need to specify reason and also spatial resolution. And then it's done, right? So I can come here on the refresh. Uh, it might be this in here. So this one, okay. Lens set dot tiff. Uh, if you try to open it, it's a geo tiff. It probably doesn't work here. But you can open it using uh, um desktop GS. So what we are trying to do here, if you don't specify this region, if I remove it, okay, run again. I'm gonna show you an error occurred while downloading. Total request size. Uh, this is like how many bytes must be less only basically this is the maximum so we can see how about here one two i think this is maybe four megabytes something and what, what you're requesting is many many times larger so google sending doesn't allow you to directly download the data but large data set directly to a computer <laughs> and just like you are trying to watch uh, you are watching a netflix movie right and you say, oh, this movie is nice. I want to save a copy on my computer. It's not going to take you like one second. You get like 10 gigabyte of movie to a computer. It's not going to work. You can get a small piece like, oh, you can download sample. You can have a much smaller file size. If you really want to in time image, probably you need to increase the resolution to much larger number. So it's cost resolution. So for example, 300 meter. Let's see if it works. Okay. If you can see the URL, the usually means it works. So now you see the, the other one here, right? It's this one. Let me see if I can open it and show it for you. Maybe Q. Let's see if you have a QGS here. Ah. Oops. It's not working. Anyway, forget it. I need to fix it. Sometimes install other stuff, you can break it. But if you want, you can, you can use the add raster. I think we did it before. So I can maybe, how about this? Uh, let me show here. Map dot add master, and then line set. It may not work. I'm not quite sure. So here, just run it. Or oh, add master add. It might be just a single band. So if you don't specify, uh, what bands you're gonna add, it will be just one single band. Okay, it works, right? So in here, uh, this might be just a cost resolution image. So local cost, right? The original lens image. So this is the one that I just actually just downloaded, right? In Taiwan, but the resolution is pretty low. So if you zoom in, you it's going to see a lot of pixel, right? You're not downloading, not downloading the entire original lens image. So right now, back come on this one. You see what's the difference? Is? So although it can download, but it doesn't mean that it's good enough. So Google Engine has a limitation, doesn't allow you to download large amount of data set. But anyway, so this is, if you want the entire one, a uh, uh, cost resolution. So later I will show you how other ways to um, download the uh, other 
um images anyway so this is for if you direct download to your, to your computer use the e export image okay sometimes after you download the image you overlay it with your other data set you might see like half pixel offset so basically it doesn't align exactly with your other data set if that happens then when you download it you might want to specify the projection and also the coordinate uh change form so take a look at this one right so this is if you want to be very precise about the projection you want to specify the cis and the cis transform so here these two earlier when we download it right it doesn't it doesn't have that one so right now if you specify this one it will be much more precise because when you're downloading the image google sending automatically calculate basically the upper left corner the origin so sometimes if you don't specify it's like the calculation might be a little bit off and the result you download it might not be aligned perfectly so here if i for example i put uh specify the projection and then cis so basically the cis and cis transform are automatically you can get it from the original image so in that way when you download it uh in general it should be aligned perfectly with the original image but because we're downloading a course resolution so you might not see much difference anyway for most of you you can just use e export image specify which us engine image you want to download what's the file name and what's the resolution and it should be sufficient unless you know like all oh, the images are not good then you can be more uh, precise so this is one way you can download um the image from your computer uh, to your computer or to google drive and that's using the official uh, official python api there's another one here called download e image okay kind of confusing e export image this one is using the official api has a limit and if you're using this download e image this one kind of is a workaround so it doesn't have the limit so you can download gigabyte gigabyte data to your computer directly and this is the recommended way kind of work around so you can think about google sending only allows you to download small pieces and each one is like 32 like couple megabytes so what this one work around behind under the hood is subdivide the images area into smaller pieces and download each small pieces and then offline most them back together is a big one right so basically it's like okay i want it whole pizza uh, it's nice yeah you cannot get it but i only allow you to get a slice okay and what you do is like okay i get one slice get one slice like do all the slides i mean and then eventually you end up with the whole piece a uh, whole pizza i did like this so right now if you for example you've done this one uh this one has an additional dependency called uh g uh dim so you have to install it that one requires um raster io and some other packages so it's not uh, installed by default what you can do you can either um for example i usually recommend you install using a mamba so that you don't break your existing stuff so what i can do conda activate um g and then mamba install hyphen g conda first and then ge dim so in this way uh, you install the the dependency and then it's what usually it's work up uh out of the box and after you install this one it's going to be so much better so you can basically downloading gigabyte gigabyte data and it's parallel so it's not like okay oh, getting one slice so basically like i'm going to yeah i'm going to the student union so like they are handing out free pizza okay but everyone can only get one slice and what basically what i'm doing i want whole pizza i like i ask each of you to go there you grab one slice and then coming back and give it to me <laughs> and all at the same time not like waiting in line it's like everyone can go at the same time and each of you get one slice so in that way you end up with the entire yeah this is way too slow so let me just use pip um it usually should be pretty quick to, uh, here conda activate GE and then um pip install GE -E DM
because most of the dependency uh, dependency is already installed so it should be quick okay all done and now let's take a look so i'm going to restart my kernel and of course you need to uh, import then run this code block uh, just to load the uh, image again okay so here and let me scroll down to this one so this function right now you see i don't specify a reason so basically i'm downloading the entire image and if i run it take a look how big it is so this one is saying 179 gigabyte you see so quick and we end up with the image that's actually 170 uh, might be less than that but it's certainly la much larger than the uh, limit that you see after it's now being finished it's going to take a couple seconds because it's putting all the slices together back into the big pizza and now you want to see the green it's good to go so if you come back to the driving here full right so this one is 96 the reason is smaller than this one because it's compressed so if you if you open using arcgs or qgf and you see the original file size it should be close to this one but it's smaller but right now you take a look compared to the original one it's like um 11 megabyte but now we are downloading right so the recommended way is using this one of course if you don't specify i can you will download the original one so i can download like 30 30 meter if i don't want it so compared to 30 meter and uh, and 10 meter how big would the file size increase how many times 30 meter compared to at least earlier it was 60 me, uh 60 meter right now it's 30 meter how, how many times of the file size will increase i changed it from 60 meter to 30 meter so 60 meter was 179 how big will be for 30 meter four times right two by two right with 60 to 230 meter the increase um width and height more than double a uh, double so that means four times so you expect that 179 for example 180 uh four times it will be uh 60 600 and at least 600 something it might be gigabyte okay why well, oh same time same 118 right like i said six to seven hundred megabyte and you see it's like pretty quick right so if you need some large data set you want to download a uh, big data set this is the recommended way but again this is kind of work around and google might like ban this in the future i don't know <laughs> but just like like the analogy i give you earlier right you i can like okay i send all each of you to studio in to get a slice of pizza but in the future they may say you know do you come from the same class no you can only one right in mind but at least right now what is what still available you can you can use it technically uh you see oh it's 240 uh, megabyte so it's not too bad compared to like a small like couple megabytes so this is so much better and try it out if you like it so this is one way the other way is you can do it like this so if you even if you can download it in time means but think about you but downloading images for at the global scale right so you might have an image that's um, 20 gigabyte even if you can download it like it's a single image it's going to be way too big if something goes wrong then you fail then you have to start from the beginning right so rather than download the entire image as a last file you can subdivide them into smaller pieces so here there's a function called fishnet okay and then image dot geometry basically the entire image and then i subdivide into four rows and four columns uh, there's a delta here 0.5 you can just uh, uh sometimes if it doesn't cover the entire image you just increase this number because you might end up with like the line might be somewhere in here so if you miss a small portion then you can increase this one usually it should be enough to cover the entire image and then i add basically this fishnet uh, in here once you have this one and there's a function in here called download e image right compared to the one we used earlier download e image is that download the entire image as a single file but you can also specify like 
tiles basically is going to in smaller one so give me an image give me this fish net and then tell me where you want to download it right so the output directory where is it uh, specify somewhere where is it oh no here or oh it's here downloads okay so it's under the downloads uh directory and you can also specify the prefix so basically prefix means the file name in here we have 16 images so you're going to line set underscore zero one zero two all the way to 16 and you also specify the cpsg 3857 so this is basically the web mercator uh basically what this map is showing in here and then lastly is the resolution so think about compared to the entire image that we downloaded like 240 gigabyte or, or 800 like if this uncompressed now we are downloading all of them uh, maybe i change the file uh output file name uh folder here i export the tiles and then just run it so in total right four by four have 16 images and you see like one by one and then i download it to the tiles directory so take a look right, of course you need to wait a little bit so if you are downloading uh if your image is like very very big cover the entire globe and it's like many many gigabyte if you're trying to download for example 10 meter resolution image that you mosaic for the entire globe over tennessee for example it's going to be pretty big so it's going to be many many gigabytes so one thing you can do is to create this kind of fish net so basically get the state boundary or whatever geometry and then you create like okay four rows four columns or ten whatever rows and columns and you have that one and then once you get the geometry give me the image give me this fish net and then specify where you want to download what's the resolution and then done so in this way you can download like gigabyte gigabyte data direct to the computer so right now we're downloading 16 uh 16 images so we see on the left side here right pretty cool so now it's also all uh, alphabetically so you know exactly uh which image is which and after you have this you're going to mosaic them back together then you can use um gis or use digital to just pull them all together so this is actually the fastest way to get data without going to google drive because if you go to google drive you need to wait uh it's not like instant but this one is pretty much like instant so it can help you download any data set sometimes if you want like oh i want to quickly take a look and i want to get some data out yeah try this one it's certainly faster than you go to like usgs or other data portals and you download data and switch because uh, one nice thing about google saying you can quickly filter the data to the area that you want and filter by cloud cover and other stuff right so it's so much fast and you can also just simply create a mosaic and once you have that you can just download it easily um, but again if you're downloading terabyte terabyte data then this is pretty not for you even if you can download like this it's going to still take you take a while for you to download all the images but you have it and this this is something you can do even to download uh, last some of data so it can be any images it can be any images collection so right now basically we're downloading just one image but we subdivide them into uh, smaller pieces and then uh, get them so and you see it took uh i believe there's another function that you can download in parallel let me see if this uh here let me take a look that one might be a little bit faster so i think if i'm not mistaken i did one a while ago so let me try this one maybe tiles two and i think this one like parallel e okay yeah so earlier we download e image tiles it's basically you have 16 images it's by sequence so you download the finish one you go to the next one there's also there's actually a parallel function that can help you uh download them simultaneously i think it's four or five like uh in the same at the same time and it's going to take a while so i'm going to just change the maybe a uh, low resolution just to demonstrate what it is it's work actually sometimes on windows it isn't easy but uh, if it doesn't work you can try on google collab so you can still like downloading 
But the downside is that it's going to take some time for you to initialize because this is like multi threading. So this is basically doing parallel processing. So you're sending um, multiple commands at the same time and it's going to download all the images uh, rather than like give it one and then you need to wait until the next one. So let me see if it works. Uh, tiles 2. Oh, it's already here. You see? It's like popping up. Supposedly, it should show you the, uh, the, the status, but it doesn't come out in here. So, I'm... Okay, finish. 37 seconds. Compared to the one earlier, right? It's much faster. And... So you go to ties 2. Uh, you still have the files. Although this one is a little bit smaller because I don't download the original uh, 30, meter, 30 meter resolution. But still, it's so much faster than the earlier one. It's just so the the status. Uh, yeah. Anyway, the parameters are pretty much similar. So if you think that by sequence, like it's too slow, then you try this one. Download e image tiles underscore parallel. So this is probably a whole faster, uh, four to five times faster than the previous one. Okay, so that's how you can download data to your computer directly. And if you want to use the office or you don't want to like uh, use the workaround. So this is more like hacking the Google sending server and sending uh, an army to get all the data, get all the pizza. But this is the one that's supported officially by Google sending. So you export data to a Google Drive. And the describe uh, description basically you, you specify um, the name of the the task and where you want to export. Also the reason, the scale. So this one is exactly the same as earlier. E export image, but rather than download it to a computer, right now we are exporting this one to Google Drive. Oops. Uh, reason. I think I need to execute uh, this one here. So basically it's still a smaller maybe one again here okay uh, so what we're doing here we're trying to download this small piece and then going to the google drive the google drive you can download a much larger file size but the downside is that you need to wait so it's not instant so right now if i run this one you see it doesn't show you anything looks like it's done but it is not it's just sending the task to google sending so if you want to check it, you need to go to your Google Sending account. So I'm going to go here and then log in. Uh, in the field, so I'm hoping to develop something that allows you to check the task status directly within the Jupyter notebook without having to go to Google Sending. But for now, this is what you need to do. So I'm going to go to the task and see, do you see this one here? It's running. So right now, basically it's like executing the task, but it's not instant. So it depends on the the size of the file that you're trying to download. It can be like a couple seconds, it can be minutes, or it can be hours. So if you're downloading gigabyte gigabyte data, it's going to take you hours. But this is the official exporting uh, solution. So if you want to go to your Google Drive, so after it's done, for example, if you see the blue um, status, that means the file is done. And then you can open this one in Google Drive. So if you open it, all right, you see all the files that I downloaded previously. So in this way, if you have Google Drive, you will basically it's automated rather than you have to wait. So this is like if you have a large amount of data you want to export, and you you don't want to waste the computing power. You want you don't want to keep your computer on, right? It might be it might export in my last for day. Then this might be better because once they send in the task, it's exporting and the, the file will show on your Google Drive automatically. So when it's done, you can just copy the file to your computer or you use a, a Google Drive client. So in that way, you don't need to keep your computer on. Once the tasks are sent, everything else is taken care of. You see, now it, oh, it's still running. Oh, it's done, like one minute. Now I can go to my Google Drive, open it. You see, it's here. And 16.9 gigabyte, right? Uh, megabyte, 16.9 megabyte. And it's automatic. Then you can just like Google Drive, you can just copy to a computer. So that's like super uh, easy. Again, I make sure that when you export to Google Drive, you need to check the status in your account. 
or you can just check your Google Drive. If the file shows up, then it means it's done. If after a while, the file doesn't show up in Google Drive, and then go to you need to go to uh, Google Earth Engine account to check it because you might see you might see the red color. That means the task failed. Um, it's not successfully. Then you have to try uh, somehow try again. Okay, so that's exporting to Google Drive. That's it. Uh, usually this one you can export directly to your Google Sync account if you want to save the data. So it means if the data is out, then you cannot no longer utilize uh, cloud computing. But if you export to assets, that means it's still in the Google Sync account. You can still uh, it's still usable. And also to uh, cloud storage to NumPy something like that. Okay, uh, NumPy basically means you want to get the data directly out. So here let me quickly show you. Right, e to NumPy. Uh, for those of you who use uh, Python packages NumPy, then you, you, you can export a smaller one, a piece of images directly to NumPy, something like this. Right, how many rows, how many columns, and uh, you can pull it out. Okay, so it's up to you. Um, but again, this is only works for small section of images. If you're doing a large one, it's not going to work. But there are different ways you can do that. So. Okay, so we already covered the images. I think we finished up the, this one on probably Wednesday. There's still quite a bit um, more to cover. Anyway, so that's all for today. And then it's time for quiz five.